this whole resistance to uh, using computers to support facilitation processes. And what, why would there be uh, that kind of issue in the first place? Well, you know, I, I remember one of my first uh, scenes of resistance was at Amico Corporation, where someone said, you can't have people chained to their disks for eight hours a day doing a meeting and, uh, using a computer. And, you know, I didn't want to disagree with everybody, but I said, respectfully, uh, people sit in meetings for eight hours a day talking about nothing often. You know, the old concept of meetings where hours are, I'm sorry, where minutes are taken and hours are wasted. So the idea, the idea of what we do with this with technology is not the issue. The issue is the process that I want to uh, show you here. And that's, we're going to go from a classic brainstorm to, uh, which is the old Osborne uh, idea of starting with a blank slate. And we're going to use a new, a new, well, it's not a new technique. It's, it's been around, I believe, since the 50s or 60s, since the 60s. But well, many people do not know how to use it. How many have heard of the scamper technique? Okay, Rocky's heard of it. That's about it. And Chris has heard of it. Right. But uh, the scamper technique is a, is a technique for brainstorming that involves thinking in, in different ways. Because uh, you know, a lot of people are sort of averse to the concept of brainstorming. Oh, you need to have a, a, a blank screen, you need to have this fresh <coughs> thing. But sometimes your thinking needs to be directed in a little bit, in a little bit. And so the idea of scamper was invented by a guy named Bob Everly, not the singer, saying with Glenn Miller, but uh, uh, a, a professor named Bob Everly who thought that, you know, this is kind of a directed brainstorming, like kind of focusing on people in certain areas. So when you are logged in, let me know, and we'll do, uh, we'll start a little bit of the classic Os Osborne brainstorming on a topic I find very interesting. And once we uh, are done with that, I will ask you to, we'll switch modes and do the scamper type of brainstorming and see how that works. Then what, the third phase of this, I'm going to ask you to do, if you will, now, this will be offline. And the idea of the, what the scamper is, one of the things that Chris and I and Rocky have been working on is, what do we do for this organization? You know, in our last two planning meetings, we keep thinking about what are we, what do we offer, what kinds of information do we want to uh, <coughs> disseminate to the world here about what the organization does and what benefit we can provide to people. So uh, what we're going to do is, uh, offline, there will be a scamper activity for the chapter. And we'll be asking you some questions. You'll get your experience with the scamper here. I want you to transfer that to your thinking about scamper. And uh, we'll be passing this out, the we'll link to this out to people uh, to get some input from other people about what, what do we do with this organization? What's the idea of scamper? There's five letters in the word, seven letters in the word scamper. So each of these balloons represents one of the letters. S for substitute. In other words, if you're looking at a problem, what can you substitute in order to resolve the problem? What can be substituted? And underneath this camper, there are several questions, so we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. C, first camper, is combine. What can, can you combine a couple of things and come up with something that uh, replaces the initial entity? Uh, a, adapt. How can you adapt something uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that is innovative? M is easy for either modify, magnify, or minify. Can you change something? Can you make it bigger or make it smaller? Uh, P is put to other uses. That's what P is scamper for. E is for eliminate. What can you eliminate or remove? And R is what you reverse or rearrange. So that's the concept of scamper. And there are focus questions underneath each of these balloons. We'll get to that in just a minute. But right now, let's do the, the classic Osborne brings. What things have smartphones either made obsolete or obsolete? The reason I chose that subject is for 30 years I've looked for a subject that people could talk about without having to think too much. And this was given to me as a as an email, uh, 30, 30 items on a list were sent to me and said, things that the uh, that the iPhone eliminated. And I thought, well let's let's rephrase it because I saw 30, I came up with 30 right off the top of my head. And um, at some point, I, I thought this will be a great brainstorming topic, and I've used it not only to introduce people to this type of te technology, but also just for brainstorming if we're just doing it in a session. I, I use it in, in some sessions where we just do paper and pencil. It's a great thing to get people started to think. So that was what you wanted to do? Exactly. So I'm going to give you a little bit of space here, and 
the construction say uh, minimum three ideas per person. Hey, I'm saying you, you, you just get in there, there as many ideas as you want. The question is, and again, it's something that we all can think about. And those of you who don't have computers, just to talk to the person or devices, talk to the person next to you, and tell them what you'd like them to say. The question is, what happened? And so, they either obsolete or obsolescent. Ha! Need to ask for directions, paper, um, connect with more people. Okay, think about the idea of, uh, I, I talk, talked about, about comfort level. What, what makes people comfortable when they're doing things like brainstorming? Well, one is anonymity, because they put a stupid idea or an idea that they think is stupid. Uh, they don't feel constrained about doing it because nobody knows where it came from because we're using that. All right, we've got 12 ideas. Dictionary, iPod, camera, thermometer, remembering phone numbers, face-to-face -face conversations. Mara, are you giving some ideas? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Right. Okay. So, let's see how many things we've got. 14 so far, uh, 15, flash. Who said flash? Flashlight. My first was, the way I thought about it was, I was thinking of a mobile phone as a phone. But what happens, seemingly what, what has happened here is, you give up the conception, concept of the mobile phone as a phone and more as an information device. Interesting. So for me, there's a shift in thought because you know, I, I grew up in an age when a phone was a phone was a phone. phone. Mm -hmm. And now, phone is a mobile device and that opens up. So this list to me comes from that environment. So it's kind of a revelation from my So the reason I have this brainstorm, have you do this brainstorm is getting used to the Osborne thing, but also to open up your mind to the types of things that smartphones have done to and so here I've got the list of 104. Just go ahead and take this. And the reason I'm giving you out the list is you're going to use this in the scamper. Go ahead. Let's just review some of the things. First thing here is suggest other questions to ask. The idea is, are there other questions we should ask within the idea of modifying the identifier? Okay. So now the example. Ford Explorer and Brenner successfully ended with huge profits, so they created an even bigger expedition. So that was a lot of a megaphone. So even though we're talking about doing uh, Making fewer gas guzzlers, Ford did the opposite because the Explorer was so was so successful. Uh, so that's one example here. So each of these areas of, uh, of the scamper has examples, one or more. It also has the other questions. But here now there's, there's several questions under each one. And you don't have to answer all the questions. All you have to do is answer one or two questions. If you have comments to what other people are suggesting or questions about that, or you want to ask them, or you want to comment on that, or you want to respond to the question. Please feel free to do that. So, for example, question one: How could you change the shape, look, or feel of this product? So, a smartphone: How could you change the look, uh, look, the look, feel, or shape of this product? We make it thinner, make it lighter. Uh, another one down here is: uh, What could you element? Could you strengthen? Remember the old cell phones? Maybe you don't, but you drop it. You do this to an old cell phone; it's already cracked. The case is cracked. The uh, lens is cracked. So nowadays, you know, I've dropped this thing how many times? And it's just as sturdy as you, as you think as you can want it to be. So, you know, what would you change in here? What would you modify, modify or magnify? Modify, magnify, or minify on a cell phone to turn it into a something more useful. So take the crack at let's first do modify, magnify, minify. And then once we've done that, now what do you do is you double you click on the bubble, and now once we've done a little bit of that, we'll have a little bit of discussion about it. And we'll have, also I want to talk about the scamp itself. Do this for a second. Because that's the whole concept of Scamper is that you're free within that realm to either answer the questions that have been asked or comment, comment on other people's responses or add a, add a new question. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is invite you to go out here multiple times. And now notice these questions are all product ready. <laughs> the Scamper we're going to do for the IAFCC is uh, these questions are more organization oriented. So the key to using Scamper is not just understanding the meaning of the, of the, of the uh, acronyms S-C-O-P-E-R, but it's also crafting questions specific to the objective. And the objective for here is a product. 
the objective for the for the uh, chapter is an organization and programs. So that's what we would like to see. I did a scamper for another organization where uh, I put out. Uh, it was, it was actually for an organization and programs, so it was kind of both. And uh, we, we started out with about 15 people, and it turns out number five, another five or six people wanted to join in. Within four days, we had like 90 comments. And this is just coming in, in and out multiple times. At this point, I think there are about 130 comments. And when I looked this morning, there were like 50 comments I hadn't even seen yet. So the numbers, I just had all, all, all the numbers on the right, and it was like 51. So I haven't seen those comments yet. So it's interesting that uh, people are really, you know, really jumped into this. And again, in the old days, the scam was done with flip charts and, and post-its. But here's a way of, again, just talking about how you make people comfortable with this kind of stuff. Well, you can do this. You can do the same thing that you did with post-its and stuff, but you can do it a lot faster, more proficiently. Now we have a report that reports have, and we have to transcribe this stuff. That's really cool. But I think we. There are different communities of fellows who meet and generate ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are folks who will meet and are, are, are very drawn to ideation using post-its. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing a gig in Springfield where, right. where that's the case. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and what happens with with some environments, and I'm not saying this critically, it's just an observation. I mean, I'm on my own learning curve. Uh, is that folks will design a meeting, and the technology is a, is a separate overlay. And you know how I can tell that? Because it almost never fails that the meeting format is fine, but when it comes to the technology, there's always a snag. Tell me, there's tell me example, always a snap. Webinars, okay. webinars, or any any type of meeting where there is any type of technology that is an overlay in a meeting format, yeah. uh, and not an integral part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell because there's always a snap, and what that may mean the presenter, you know, has a difficult time focusing the LCD projector, or next slide, please, or something disappears on the computer, and then there's this whole gap. Th those are things, and I'm not saying that critically, it just happens. It's not an integral part. It's like me thinking about a smartphone as a cell phone, and completely, you know, not thinking about this whole other environment. That's so, but that, that, that example is you self-correcting. And it took you a few minutes to re-engineer your thoughts. Yeah. But think about, but let's go back a step, just the idea of uh, this being an overlay. Uh, if it's an overlay, I can understand why, why a lot of people consider that. Let's look at the other side, another side of it, that if you design the meeting with this as the integral part of collecting the information, it may not be an overlay, it may be an integral part of the way to collect information. Absolutely. And one of the things that I find is, as a facilitator of this stuff, I can spend more time now that it's more reliable, because in the old days a lot of the time stuff would happen. Yeah. But I could spend more time facilitating the group and managing the group process. And just think about the other side of it. When you start, I, I many times I've used this technology and I ask a question, and suddenly when the ideas come out, I realize, my God, I asked the wrong question. Because I'm getting answers that don't this way. That, oh, either, that either don't make sense, or maybe I asked the wrong question, or, or maybe I didn't put a clear enough explanation. Instant feedback. So you, you, yeah. you know exactly if you ask the wrong question. I've had it so, oh, yeah. Here's an interesting thing in the environment you work in. Uh, you, you're, you're dealing mostly in the English language, right? Okay. Uh, I've done workshops where we've had people from Poland and other countries, and Belgium, and other ones. They're all working in English. And one of the things they the comment a lot in the feedback is that it was interesting to see the things because. Their reading and writing of English is better than their speaking or hearing. So if things get said, or 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 uh, you know, they, they they may not be clear, but they're kind of that whole idea of being reluctant to say, "Hey, I didn't understand that." Would you repeat it? No, it's going to make me look stupid, so I won't say anything. So now you see it in writing, since their skills in reading and writing are more from an academic point of view of the language, because they've all learned the language as a second language. 
it's much easier for them to see and, and respond this way. Well, think about, well, think about what we just did. We, we, what we did with this was to prime the pump by asking you to come up with these answers. And so they, these issues, these issues were answers to the uh, second brainstorm, which is a structured brainstorm. Now, that's a good question because what's the, the sequencing you're asking? What's the, well, this is, this is a way of, of, first of all, training people how to do a scanner. Because when you first put in people to a scanner, I just threw those questions up to you, you might, you might have a little problems with well, what is, what's, what's meaning here. So you just use this as an introductory thing. Rather than, you know, you don't have to give users yeah, tool, nice tool training on this. It's an icebreaker. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a good point because yeah. a lot of times, if I were doing a session without using a technology, I'd use that same conversation as an icebreaker. Because it, year, for years I've struggled. One of, the reasons, one of the things I used to use was what's wrong with meetings. And I've got, you know, just like I have 104 of these ideas, I've got over 500 ideas of what's, what goes wrong with meetings. I've got 500 ideas. So I still use that on occasion. And I'll bring in some of those to fill out what people will brainstorm. The problem is, is that that always gives people Oh yeah, here we are at another meeting. I'm already got some of the same yeah. part of my word, crap. Uh, so so it left people with bad feeling, and so I got away from that. The, the next thing I used, which was people didn't have to bring a lot of expertise to the party, but sometimes they did, was what's what are the problems inherent, and this is interesting today, in healthcare or health insurance. And I would get tons of stuff, except we had a Canadian or an Australian in the group. I have that problem or a rent because they've got national health care. So I said, so I would have to add, modify and say, okay, what is in your example, uh, you answer what's issues with quality of the health care you're getting. Whereas with Americans, health care insurance costs, health care availability, uh, wrong diagnoses, all that stuff will come up. So I, I have like hundreds of ideas in that, in that area. But again, it was something that just, don't ever talk about religion or politics. So there were really, you know, one of the hardest things I did in a brainstorming session, getting people, and this, I thought this would be so easy. Think about, imagine songs that you grew up with, songs that you loved, sang as a kid, sang as an adult, your favorite songs. What kinds of songs? List the songs, or if you can't think of a song, you can't remember the name of the song, list the name of the group. People would sit there and think, and they just wouldn't come off the top of their head. This is the first topic in the 30 years that I've found that people don't have any problems coming up with. And the idea of the popcorn sort is that you just drag and drop everybody to use the power in the group. Remember, they all, if we have, we have over 100 ideas, we have 133 ideas here. In the old days, we just have to go through these one by one and, you know, where does this go? We we'll put it up here. Nowadays, we can just have everybody just do a first pass, drag and drop. And once you get all the things in the buckets where you think they belong, you need to need a new bucket, shout out, hey, I need a new bucket that says healthcare. Yeah. Uh, once you get that done, then you can walk, walk through each bucket and do what we call the bucket walk. And the idea of the bucket walk is validate that what's in there is either in there or should be moved somewhere else or we need a new bucket for it. Or maybe the stuff in here represents two buckets and you split it to two. So that takes the whole thing people, you know, do you know what, what's the hardest thing to do in the medium size? Categorize. Well, what's nice here is like the scale. Like you couldn't get that many ideas that quickly because there's like the logistics of the post-its and writing it and filling it that quickly. But and people can't yeah. read them. Sometimes you can't read them. But they could hear. Yeah. 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 Like you have to go up to see it. Yeah, you have to have the right. Yeah.